Welcome back to the channel, True Believers. Today we will be talking about Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3, a James Gunn film for the Marvel Universe. Was it good? Was it bad? Was it another piece of Feiyu to come out since Endgame? Let's find out. Before we start, and as always, I ask that you like, share, subscribe, and hit the notification bell for our channel. Always trying to grow and get better, and your support helps with that. Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3 is the latest chapter in the Marvel Cinematic Universe and by all accounts that I can find will be the last time we get to see these particular members of the Guardians of the Galaxy as a force together. Aww. It stars Chris Pratt as Star-Lord, Bradley Cooper as Rocket, Palm Lamenti, I think, <laughs> as Mantis, Dave Bautista as Drax, Karen Gillan as Nebula, Zoe Zaldana as Gamora, Vin Diesel as Groot, and coming in as the main villain of this one is Chuck Woody Iwuji as the High Evolutionary. And yes, I realize I am probably butchering his name, and for that, sir, I am sorry. Yeah. Um, I do say the main villain because there are some other characters that may be called villains in this, but it's really the High Evolutionary show. Uh, other characters that round out the movie are Adam Warlock, Cosmo the Dog, Kraglin, and Aisha. This being the second week of the movie, I can check Rotten Tomato scores, and they are high um, with critics, and they are high with the fans because honestly this movie was really good now ladies and gentlemen I really want to get into spoilers and talk about this movie in depth that being said I will hold back for a little bit after that the spoilers are coming so watch for the spoiler warning if you don't want to have the movie quote unquote ruined for you in the beginning I can say that this is really Rocket's movie there are a number of flashback, flashbacks that permeate through the movie that deal with how Rocket came to be like he is and his relationship with the High Evolutionary. If you have troubles keeping up with flashbacks and time shifts in movies, just realize that this is an issue going into it. Um, try your best to keep up. It's not overly hard to do, but some people do have problems with that. I also will say and maybe this is a mini spoiler here but rocket is shot in the first couple minutes of the movie like shot shot like goes down shot uh, so the better part of the movie uh, is the remaining guardians trying to save his life because he doesn't die from getting shot but he is on a hospital table in their ship and they're trying to save his life and that's the majority or a lot of the movie trying to save him Rocket being in this state between life and death is how they introduce a lot of the flashbacks of when he was little. They ultimately give you his memories as he lays on the table between life and death. I do like the tone of this movie. It's not nearly as political as the movies in Marvel Phase 4 were or what we came into Phase 5 with. This is Marvel as you remember it and the Guardians are much more true to form. A lot more stylized action, but that's kind of a good thing. Some cool slow-mo walks or slow-mo action sequences, they're fun to watch. If you don't like how Marvel does action scenes in the past because of what seems to be like 50 cuts on one action scene or even on one punch, there is a particularly well shot action uh, sequence in a corridor where our heroes are fighting a number of bad guys in what really comes off as one continuous shot I watched it in the theater so I mean I'm not able to you know slow down and pause it and see if it really was one continuous shot but at least sitting there watching it it feels like one continuous shot they're staying on the action as they're um, handing it off from person to person uh, Gunn is able to do that. He goes from character to character 
uh, as they're fighting without really breaking any of the flow. It's actually possibly one of the best action shots in all, all of Marvel. The Marvel goofy tone is still present in this movie, but it's not really over the top. If Thor Love and Thunder was too much for you as it was for me, then you will be much happier with this movie. The jokes seem well placed and well timed. Like I said, it's much more true to the early Marvel movies and what you've come to expect from the Guardians. I will say they do find a way to work Gamora back into the movie. Actually, if you look at IMDb, she is not one of the top build actor, characters, actresses um, in this movie. You actually have to dig a little further to even find her in it. Uh, but she is actually worked back into this movie. She is added back into the uh, Guardians team. But this is the spoiler free portion of this review. So I won't tell you much more than that about her. I will say if you remember this is not the Gamora that was in love with Star Lord. Right? If you remember Gamora died in Endgame. And this is a Gamora that was brought from the past before she knew Star Lord. Um, and she's now living in this time so think like alternate timeline Gamora because of this there is a subplot line that's moving through the film and how that's kind of handled Aisha which is that golden woman from I think the first Guardians of the Galaxy and Adam Warlock who was teased at the end of that movie make an appearance in this movie as well I'm honestly not sure why they're in it um, other than to pay off the teaser of Adam War Warlock in the post credit scene from Guardians 2. Everything they do in this movie could po possibly, probably have been done in another way. And the problem with Adam Warlock is he is way underpowered from the comic books and kind of an idiot. They play this off as he was brought out of that cocoon thing early, but it's really more annoying than anything. There's a Cosmo and Kraglin subplot, a small, small Drax storyline, um, a small Ravenger storyline. All of it kind of plays as a, as a little much in the movie. It's actually good that the movie's two and a half hours long because if it wasn't, I don't know how you would fit everything in it. Some of the things I didn't like about the movie, first and foremost, is aspects of it felt cheap just just cheap i did not like the set for nowhere the place where the guardians call home now it's the same set they used for the guardians christmas special that was on disney plus plus which coincidentally i didn't like that one either it generally looks cheap uh it should have never left the disney plus streaming services lot compare that set for nowhere with the set in the first Guardians movie and you'll see what I mean like I've got some screenshots here where you're gonna be able to kind of see some of the differences but watch Guardians 3 and then go back and watch Guardians 1 and it'll be night and day the 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 first movie nowhere looked way cooler uh, maybe it was just darker that's it I don't know but it looked way better while we're talking about design I don't like the design of Groot lady lately. He looks like a bad suit that someone would wear as a team mascot or in like a Power Rangers movie or something. The original Groot from the first movie was way cool looking. And I get it, right? He's regrown. But see, baby Groot was cool. Even adolescent Groot playing his video game was cool. But this bulked up new Groot I don't know if it's like teen Groot or young adult Groot or whatever, but I don't like it. It looks bad. And he also gets some weird like kind of powers that in this movie that are neat-ish, but I don't know. Watch for them and you'll you'll see what I mean. The story is good, the comedy is good, the action is good. If you've been turned off to Marvel lately, I do recommend giving it another go with this movie. 
It is not a waste of your money. It is not a waste of your time. In fact, one of my brothers even said it's his favorite Marvel movie ever. I'm not sure if I would go that far, but it is definitely good. Go see it. Now, on with the spoilers in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. If you're looking for the will they, won't they get back together in this movie between Star-Lord and Gamora, I am sad to report they do not. And it was hard for me because I was waiting for them to get back together. And when they didn't, it was a pretty big letdown. It's like you're sitting there looking and and waiting and, 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 and okay, is this going to be it? And it never happens. And so it leaves you on that edge and it's annoying. If I had gone into this movie with that knowledge, I think I would have been better off, right? I wouldn't have been anxious about it the whole movie. And it seems like it will be pretty permanent. She goes back to the Ravengers and looks really happy with them as her group at the end of the movie. They're all like, yay, you're back. And she's all like, yay, I'm back. And I don't I don't think there's going to be a Star-Lord and Gamora going out of this movie. Maybe, maybe not, but I don't know. Despite the rumors that I had heard going into this movie, no one actually dies in it. I had specifically heard that Drax was going to die because Dave Batista wanted out of his contract, but he doesn't. Um, also, the scene you may have ha had in the previews, I think it's in the previews clips that I'm showing here, um, of the group carrying Star-Lord, uh, slow motion he walk, like Star-Lord's dead. Now, nah, he's just drunk. And this happens like in the first five minutes of the movie. Um, so that's like this weird like tease thing they're doing in the trailer. Um, remembering you're in the spoiler section, I will say Star-Lord uh, does come really close to dying in the end of the movie. And honestly, I thought he was going to. So he's running from this other ship, um, ju going to jump through space. He does this cool like use an air hose maneuver to give him a burst to, to span the distance you think he may pull it off um but then you think he won't because he like runs out of space and air and it just doesn't work and you're like oh my gosh they're actually gonna kill star lord um but then he saved and that's the closest in actual death you will see in this uh, from one of the main characters even rocket starts walking towards the light um and then he winds up not actually dying so um if you've brought children to this movie and maybe i should have put this in the other section for everybody but there is a really sad scene where rocket's friends die and if you got kids his friends are kind of cute and they're they're dead they're killed they're shot um that may be hard on the little ones in the audience so just know that that's coming ladies and gentlemen that is the end of my review like i said i do recommend this movie it is definitely worth the price of admission there are two stingers at the end of the movie one mid credit and one at the end both are worth watching um, one has to do with like the new team the other one has star lord kind of by himself uh, in a different setting you'll kind of see what i mean it's it's they're they're worth watching um stay for them don't miss out on those i do want to thank you all for watching this review um as well i hope you have a great time at the movies go see them we 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 yeah go see them we all should be on the movies it's so much fun um thanks again next time i think i'll be reviewing uh the covenant starring jake gillenthal and dar salim I actually already saw that movie. I just needed the review on it. Look forward to it. I will a uh, little, little cheat on that. It was a really good movie, people. So um, I'll see you next time. Thanks. Bye.